business. Well, before we get to our first order of business, um, we do have some new um, guests here today that we haven't um, met before. So first, I would like um, the members of the commission to give a brief introduction um, for yourself. And um, then we're going to ask those people, I guess when we come to you on the agenda, you can introduce yourself as the new people. Um, but I will start. I'm, my name is Kate Bush. I'm the town administrator for the town of Darien, and I'm the chairman of the commission. Uh, I've been on the commission for um, quite a while now. Um, and I was previously the finance director. Um, so I'm going to go in order of my list. Kim? Hi there, um, and welcome to everybody. Uh, I'm Kimberly Kennison. I am with the Office of OPM. I'm the Executive Financial Officer and uh, Representative for Secretary McCaw. Tony? Uh, good morning. My name is Tony Genovese. I'm the Finance Director and Administrative Officer for the Town of Woodbridge, representing uh, small towns on this commission. And uh, I've been in Woodbridge since 2001. And uh, I started as finance director, and now I have uh, wear two hats. <laughs> Mike? Mike LeBlanc? You need to unmute yourself, Mike. We can't hear you, Mike. You're on, you're on uh, mute. We see your lips moving. Thanks, Kim. <laughs> but um, I'm not a ventriloquist. <laughs> Appreciate it. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Mike LeBlanc. I'm the director of finance for the city of Waterbury. Uh, I've been on the commission for about uh, two years or so, and uh, I represent the uh, large city and towns uh, uh, for the commission. Becky? Good morning. I'm Becky Seelman. I'm a pension actuary. I provide pension and OPEP services to many Connecticut municipalities. And I serve on the commission because pension and OPEP liabilities tend to be very large financial matters in the in the life of many municipalities. Diane. Hi, Diane Waldron. I'm the comptroller for the city of Bristol. Um, I have been here for about four years and I think I've been a member of the um, commission probably a little bit less time than Kate, but but for a while now. Um, so I look forward to working with everybody. And Glenn. Um, I am Glenn Rybacki. I'm an attorney at the firm of Pullman and Comley. Um, my practice is primarily in the bond council field, um, and I do also represent uh, underwriters and trustees, council and banks and whatnot. So I uh, am very familiar with the uh, debt financing side of municipalities. OK. Our first order of business is to approve the minutes of the August 18th, 2021 meeting. Um, has everybody had a chance to take a look at those? And are there any um, edits, changes, additions? All right, then can I have a um, <clears throat> motion to approve the minutes? I'll so make moved. the motion. Oh, I'll second it. Okay, that was Becky, Becky. and Kim. All right, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 One abstention. Okay, thank you, Diane. Um, anybody opposed? Okay, hearing none, uh, the minutes are approved. Um, our first guest is the town of Brooklyn, and I believe we have a new first selectman. Um, if you have cameras, we do invite you to turn your um, cameras on so that we can see you when you speak. So if you would like to introduce yourself and perhaps give us an update on where the town of Brooklyn stands right now. Yeah, I'm Austin Tanner. I'm the new first selectman. Actually, I'm recycled. I was here eight years ago. Um, we have a new finance director too, Rushi Bean, who's here. So we're both on here to and uh, also like if you could give us a little review of being you know, we're both new at this. Uh, how we got on this and what we're looking to in the future and stuff. <clears throat> well, you got on this because you've had some issues with your finances and with your reporting. Um, the 
Municipal Finance Advisory Committee, our role is to try and guide you um, to address the issues that you faced um, to help you correct them and um, get to a point where um, you're running on your own. You don't need to come back to us anymore. Um, you're in good shape. You've addressed any financial deficiencies, any reporting deficiencies. Um, that's a lot of times what we run into is people who have, um, you know, been late with their audit reports and that there are serious deficiencies. You know, um, sometimes we have had communities where there's been um, misfeasance or malfeasance, um, but not enough to send them up to the bar MARB, which is the um, when there are serious economic issues and state oversight is required. So we're trying to keep you from getting there. We're trying to help you um, so that you never get up to the MARB. Thank you. I think also if if you can uh, be provided with the minutes from the last meeting uh, that were just approved, uh, there's a nice overview uh, for from an historical context as far as where Brooklyn was, uh, the matters that were discussed uh, at the last meeting, and mm -hmm. um, it'd be a, a good starting point, I think, for you as as we go forward uh, for your interactions with the commission. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I worked with Stephanie Levin. Um, okay. I was in the finance department. I was a finance assistant. So I worked under Stephanie for the whole time she was here. Um, I am aware of the issues and why we're here. Um, and we are continuing to improve upon and follow policies and procedures. Um, and I really think that we're doing a great job. Um, I'm new into this role. It's been uh, three, almost, I'm going into my fourth month as finance director. I'm doing the best I can. I'm really um, learning a lot. And um, again, uh, we're following our policies and procedures and we're doing the best we can. So um, I sent the reports. Um, if you want us to go through our updates. Or well, let me, yeah, let me ask you first, where do you stand with your audit work? Um, do you believe you will have your audit done on time? Okay, so Stephanie had tried to schedule before she left. They were the auditors came um, to Brooklyn in November, and we were trying to get them scheduled a little bit earlier. They were not able to do so. Um, so they came in November. They were the second week in November. They were here for three days. Um, they got all of the information that we need. They needed. Uh, we've supplied them with everything that they need. Um, I have been in contact with the lead auditor regularly. Um, he is hopeful <laughs> that we would have an on-time audit by December 31st. Um, we did file an extension um, because he did say he wasn't sure. And I remember seeing that um, because of the fiscal health monitoring system, that's something new. Uh, we did uh, um, apply or we did um, put in an extension and it was approved um, for January 31st. Okay. Okay. So why don't you go through and give us your update then? Okay. Um, just the fiscal year 2021, again, um, uh, there's nothing new to report on based on August 18th. Um, the, one of the things that the, uh, the school ended um, 211000 under budget, basically because of transportation, um, uh, the contract was finalized. And um, so we're anticipating, this is pre-audit, a 486,000 approximately to be put um, in, uh, added to the fund balance. Um, as far as uh, fiscal year, the current fiscal year, um, to date about 56% of the real estate taxes have been collected so far. Um, the town was reimbursed by the uh, Board of Ed 122,000 for ESSER funds over the summer programming. Um, the town has received th approximately 33,000 from ZREC income so far um, from the solar project that was completed at the schools and um, pilot funds were received more than what was anticipated and what was budgeted for 102,000 and um, uh, MRSA was 36,000. 
Um, as far as the corrective action plan, some of the corrective action plans, we did open a bank account for the recreation activities. I know that was one of the things that um, was in, uh, the auditors wanted us to see, see done. And we have um, opened that account. The recreation activities is depositing to that account. Now it's separated out from the general fund. That is one thing that um, we did do. Um, I am not sure. I'm trying to review, think of any of the other corrective plan actions, but I can't remember. I'm sorry. That's so you have a you have a separate fund set up, not just a separate bank account, but you have a separate yes. fund. Yes, yeah. there has always been a separate fund. There's always been a separate fund, um, but there's actual bank account that um, is is linked okay. to that fund. Um, going back to your you're adding the 486 to your fund balance. What I was looking to see if you had sent us a balance sheet. Um, I did. I, said, I see the revenue and expense reports, but what percentage, how, how is your overall fund balance as a percent of your, um, um, you know, I don't have that information right at, right okay. on me. I, I would estimate it as like the five to 6%. Okay. Do you have plans to um, increase that in your next budget? We have, we have a three year plan to move it up. Okay. And what's your target? Uh, I think it's 10%. Yes, 10%. Okay. We have a three year plan to move it up. And if we don't make it, we have a, a plan to do it, review it again and do it within two years. Okay. All right. Um, that was one thing that we did um, at the September 16th. The Board of Finance approved a fund balance policy. Mm, awesome. Very good. Um, Yes, and um, so that was one of the things I listed under the other fiscal matters. Um, they, yes, yeah, so they approved it on September 15th. The fund balance policy will be 10% of expenditures with a four year plan to increase the fund balance if it okay. falls okay. below the threshold. Uh, we're working towards that 10%. That's terrific. Um, do you issue much debt? I'm sorry. Do you we, issue much debt? We just refinanced this year. We had a lot of short-term bonds and we took out a 20-year note and paid all those off. Okay. I'm just thinking that, you know, if you are a regular issuer, you might want to get that fund balance, increase your target at some point um, beyond the 10%. But you've, you've made a good start. If, um, we get, if we get the 10, that'd be a good start. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, let me, um, okay, go to um, Kim. Do you have any what, questions? What do you suggest for guidelines now? <clears throat> oh, I'd go, I'd go higher. I'd look more like 12%, 12 to 15. Um, not too much higher, but I think a little bit higher than 12% or 10% would be good. Kim, do you have any questions? I. I do, but um, not on the financial at this very moment. Um, I'm, I wonder, I wonder if you have um, ARPA funds and if you have spent any of your ARPA funds and if there was a plan um, put into place for the use of the ARPA funds. We we're setting up a committee to look into it. We haven't spent any yet. We have requests coming in, but the committee is going to review the request and, and see where we're going with it. Good. Okay, um, <clears throat> Tony. I have no questions at this time. Thank you, Mike. Uh, just quickly, with the auditors having been through, uh, have they identified any issues, uh, reconciling issues, uh, or is there any indication of any adjustments to your projected year-end results? You know, at this point, I have not received any indication yet. Okay. Okay, great. Becky? I don't have any questions. Okay. Diane? I don't have any either. Glenn? I don't have any as well. Okay. All right. <clears throat> um, thank you. That was, um, that's pretty good. Um, okay. we'll, we will be looking forward to seeing that audit report and any management letter that comes in. Um, 
and also, you know, it'd be nice if you could send us a copy and, and you know, you reported on your fund balance policy, but if you could actually send us a copy of the fund balance policy that you adopted. Oh, sure. I can okay. do that. All right. Mm -hmm. That'd be great. Excuse me, Kate? Yes. Can you hear me? Oh, Dom, yeah. didn't know you were here. Well, yeah, I've been sitting in uh, Microsoft Teams hell for 10 minutes before <laughs> I, I called in to OPM direct because uh, nobody was letting me in. So I'm sorry. We can I try it again. <laughs> uh, no, I don't because I missed about eight minutes of your I don't want to ask of something that you've already covered here. So I'll defer. Thank you. OK. Um, Kate, I, I just have one more thing before we um, let Brooklyn go. Um, we know that in the past, I don't know if the superintendent is on the line, but we do know in the past that um, some of the issues that had a lot um, occurred was uh, was the financial system and not the proper setup. And I know that Steffi and Stephanie had did a, a lot of work to make sure that the interaction between the Board of Ed and the city continue or the town continues to run smoothly and the the two um, you know collaborate and making sure that the systems are up to play. That was a lot of the issues that had a lot um, were, were there in the past. So I just want to make sure how important it is for that relationship to continue. And even though there's a new administration, Rushi, I know that you were there prior to um, Stephanie, that uh, with Stephanie, uh, that this um, this continues to be a good working relationship from the financial okay. perspective. Yeah, are you talking about the working relationship between the school and the town? Yes, I am. And the financial yeah. information going back and forth. Yes, um, yes. I mean, I think it helps that I'm uh, the finance director for both the town and the school. Very so, good. <laughs> um, that will continue. And just just note, my, my name is Rushi. It's, I oh, Rushi, it's, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's okay. Everybody gets it wrong, but just to clarify. We, Thank we've you. Been, we've been in constant contact working with the finance department and we plan on working closely where well, we have to work closely with them. <laughs> <laughs> good. Kate, I did have one follow-up question, uh, Rushi. In regards mm -hmm. to backfilling your position that you yep. came from, uh, mm -hmm. are there plans in place for that? Um, we've already filled my position. We were we also had another uh, internal candidate, and she started one week after I took the finance director position. So we only had one week without um, a. Uh, one finance director, I mean, finance assistant. So all of our finance assistants positions are filled and we're working on getting her trained and caught up and um, she's doing a great job. Excellent. And what about the position that she vacated? Um, she was, she actually was not um, in an accounting field. Okay. With the town. Uh, she came from, she was actually a para, but she has an accounting background. So she was perfect. She actually has an accounting degree and she's she's um, wanted to go back into this. And so she fit perfectly and she's doing wonderfully. <clears throat> OK. Um, all right. Well, when is the next review or whatever you call this? Thank you very much. Um, all right. So next up is the city <coughs> the of Kate, um, yeah. the first selectman had a question. I'm I, sorry. I don't think we heard him very well. When is the next review or a meeting like this? Um, we have to set that calendar later. Let's see. But is it six months, a year? Um, no, the next one is scheduled for um, February. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Let's see. Derby is next on our agenda. And looks like we've hey, got this. Yes. So, sorry, just I want to, Derby is a client Hi. for bond council work. So I just wanted to make that known. Thank you. Good morning. <clears throat> I think I'm unmuted now. <laughs> yes, we can hear you. Um, my my name is Agata Harashimovic. I uh, started in Derby in July. And I um, like to tell you that I feel better now than in August, last time I talked to you. Um, we have uh, moved quickly with uh, reconciliation and pick up uh, some old items I inherit. 
um, and I would like to be, uh, you know, moving uh, forward with this practice, uh, getting bank rates done. Since I inherit 12 months of unreconciled stuff, I have to really be careful with, with practice we have. Um, I also encourage um, Board of Education to uh, hire professionals to run their uh, finances. Um, and they have uh, people right now uh, working, um, getting staff for the audit and the auditors are um, exam their uh, balances. Because I didn't receive balance sheet account from Board of Ed, um, I only receive expenditure. I cannot really speak how they end up the fiscal year 2021. Um, so, so this is kind of, um, you know, um, holding um, process a little bit by when I did the projection for year 2021, I kind of tell that audience that, you know, I don't expect any money left in a board of ed budget, but I may have a pleasant surprise, I hope. <laughs> Mm, as far as a projection, I, I'm very happy to to see uh, fund balance going up, but um, I, I'm still skeptical. I want to make sure uh, I have my numbers blessed by auditor, and um, getting you know fund balance up to speed with specific uh, level. I probably will introduce to the new board. We had election this year. So I would like to introduce uh, fund balance policy maybe to the new board and um, look at, keep the eye on what they want to really do with fund balance uh, in the future if we're going to, you know, um, keep certain level or, or how we're going to support our budget. Um, just want to mention that uh, 2021 budget was heavily supported by fund balance. So, so that's why we have a nice savings at the end. But, you know, if this practice is going to continue, I don't see this uh, happening in 2022 budget. So we need to really strike the balance what the right fund balance policy should be. And this is going to be discussion with a new board. Um, so, as far as so, so I, I provided uh, results, my proposed uh, results are like we may have a 14, 13 percent fund balance at this point. Uh, at the end of 2021, which is very nice. Um, I think outcome overall after years of um, having problems. Um, as what do you attribute as, um, that increase to, Agatha? So I was looking at that thing and, and going, uh, looking through the process uh, through the revenue summary. Um, we definitely had, a, I'm looking at the, Stronger, um, what's it called? Uh, we have a very strong uh, outside work, which brings the revenue, police uh, outside work. It's not special revenue, it's within a general fund. So, wherever they make money, um, they're getting 263000 of uh, extra mm -hmm. revenue into the general fund. Um, also, we had a tax, uh, I think, uh, budget wise, I have to compare from five areas, uh, tax collect, tax uh, clerk, uh, conveyance taxes went up over 100,000. Uh, uh, we have um, also uh, small items uh, such as, you know, prior year taxes. I'm not totally happy about uh, collection of the taxes because um, I see drop in the receivable uh, in a so, so it, it is a little bit, I think, had, uh, less on collections, but also I see lots of uh, adjustments in a tax collector report for, for a reduction uh, of tax base. So I have to really take a second look why we are um, getting less than um, billable um, rent list. Yeah, see, I'm, I'm so, looking at that um, right now, and your revenue... No is about 200 you d you yeah. didn't get as much as you budgeted what yes. did you what was your collection rate estimate so it was a 97 i think for last year 97 point something or the old one i had a 2021 um are you going to revisit that collection rate in doing the next budget so so so, 
so so collection rate, I, I just want to make sure uh, collection rate probably has to be adjusted down during the uh, grand list calculation. What I'm seeing quite often, I have to really work with assessor. Are we getting really hit by um, assessment reductions? And if this wasn't calculated as a part of the, you know, grand list uh, build up, I may have a problem there. That's why we having, um, you know, an accurate projection of the um, grand levy, taking in consideration that we're going to have a addition and deletion on a on a on a grand list. So, are you saying you think your grand off. your the grand list that you're using for the mill rate calculation may be off? Yes, that's what okay. I kind of suspect because uh, I'm seeing constant adjustments, uh, and I review the balance sheet, tax collector balance sheet, and I'm thinking, uh, yes, there is a huge adjustment going through the, you know, um, corrections. So I need to really look at this for in a future future budget. Mm. Um, so so that's the kind of. Um, Yes, we we may be not collecting, but also are we adjusting correctly uh, our you know projection of grand list? Mm -hmm. uh, so that's the confusion because we we're pretty uh, good with supplemental uh, collection and prior year collections, um, but um, I have to really revise uh, revise this as a as a review process. Um, so so yes, we are. Um, Getting more money definitely in uh, other areas, uh, special education access cost sharing um, went up. I have a uh, lot of questions on how revenue is built in the city. So um, I just took the straightforward numbers. Um, some of them are wash uh, because when we put a certain budgetary number, they're going as a revenue and expenditure. And if things didn't happen, they basically wash. Um, other than that, those are small items which contributed. We had 50,000 appropriation from fund balance in revenue line, but also we had, uh, you know, as a contribution from fund balance in expenditure line. So, so it's it's a, the way how it budget works. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's very interesting uh, to me. Uh, it's a different concept. I have to kind of digest certain things, but. Uh, Apparently, I believe um, the numbers are pretty. I'm pretty confident with the thing uh, with the numbers because what happened is in uh, 2021, I really aggressively applied, you know, basic accounting, accrual accounting concepts, and at, as of, as of November 30th, uh, as far as uh, you know, closing due to closing receivables, I'm clearing this stuff. So I'm I'm going after all those items which should be closed and they are closing. So, so I'm confident with, with you know, um, projections um, because I, I follow up with them on a, on, a, on a monthly basis right now. What about with the Board of Ed reconciliation? Are you doing that? Um, so, no, I have to be honest. Um, I uh, wasn't successful. Uh, I, they tried to give me information, but until I don't have their Bank accounts reconciliation on a monthly basis, and they uh, their revenue stream and revenue uh, expenditure. I cannot really rely on information um, given to me. Um, so I hope the new consultants will help this process uh, be implemented. Okay. All right. Uh, um, also, go yeah. Ahead. Uh, also, I want to. Just want to let you know that you know I have underdeveloped accounting system. Um, what I mean by that is I only have general fund on a on a system. Um, uh, all other small funds are checkbooks or QuickBooks or or something not really ledger built. So I, mm -hmm. I do have to restructure accounting as a whole uh, to to really rely on you know how all relationship work just to give you a snapshot i received audit in july 20 uh, july 21 for 2020 audit, uh, for 2020 fiscal year and i had to kind of build retrofit to my ledger okay so so it took the painful task to balance fund balance 
to start from the good beginning balances. So I retrofit all those 50 adjustment, uh, audit adjustment into my ledger because ledger wasn't really capturing audit. So, so that's the, the, the task I'm, I'm against because it, it, yes, we have a ledger general fund, but you know, other pieces are, if not kept, they are, you know, not presenting properly. So I'm, I'm keeping balances and uh, right now trying to keep balance sheet accounts, but both of it is the problem uh, because they are part of the balance sheet. Okay. Um, my recollection in looking at the minutes, you, you do need to move to a new financial system, but... Um, not, now is not the good time, I believe. I, I know that um, getting information and putting stuff, I, for example, I, I uh, established ARPA funds, um, which, you know, uh, it, it basically has to just separate established fund. And this is like first fund I established here and more has to be established. I need to put stuff on the system first. That's why I believe I need to um, build a system to be able to operate and, and after when I had good strong balance sheet account would be great to have you know more, more elaborate uh, system but right now I didn't to build um, new structure uh, the kind of structure what I have okay um all right let me um start going through the commissioners um go from the bottom up this time Glenn um, my my only question was you you had said that the system has been problematic um, and you're focusing on the audit. Um, any idea timeline when you know when you'd be looking at you know getting the system updated and and when that would be done? Um, I believe right now there are different priorities. I, I promise to work on audit. I have to go through the process of cap, uh, capital planning. I have to do other more hands-on, I would say, um, important in task I need to complete before I dive into um, new software talk. Because we know that it's, right now I don't have deputy uh, hired yet. We were not successful with hiring. New deputy, I hired a temporary help to uh, work with me, and I have to really get people on board before I move, you know, towards uh, new tasks. Um, that's why I don't really feel that pushing this quickly will be beneficial to the, you know, um, to the finance. So let me ask this: despite the fact that you don't have all of your funds on the same software. Are you doing double entry accounting with all funds, regardless of where they are maintained? So yes, I'm okay. doing this um, by setting up new funds. Okay. All right, sorry, Glenn, That was was that your only question? Uh, yeah, that, and I was gonna ask about staffing, which I think Agata addressed. Just addressed, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, Diane, but how many vacancies? So um, right now I'm only on one accountant uh, in the city uh, finance department. I have a position open for deputy. We didn't have much, uh, you know, qualified candidates as, as far as uh, during recruitment process. Um, recently we decided to change um, descri uh, job description a little bit mm -hmm. and uh, increase pay, rate pay. Uh, because it wasn't really, you know, appealing to uh, certain people, I believe. And uh, it's a union position, so we have to go through union, uh, you know, deliberation. And, and that's why I, I'm kind of trying to uh, get as much as much as, as help through the temporary staff, which I'm very happy with. But um, as, as far as that could be coming on board strong and, you know, that would help me with maintaining everything. Okay. Diane? Um, Agatha, I do have a couple of questions. Um, looking at your revenues for 
21 in your budget? Because I know one of the concerns is, is, you know, looking at what you're budgeting for your tax collection rate and, you know, all the other revenues obviously impact, um, you know, the net number you have to come up with for the mill rate. Um, there are a couple of revenues I just have questions on. Um, one of them are low SIP reimbursement. There was 108,000 that was budgeted and nothing was recorded for 21. And then there were 250 for previous years built into the budget, nothing recorded for 21. And then there are some, it looks like transfers maybe that were supposed to come in from the um, WPC health insurance premiums. Uh, what is your plan for those? items so so ideally I, I when you look at the law set um there those are multiple year uh capital projects they are embedded in a general fund last year we have uh, so so the 20 250 are prior year i rec nothing was uh, really requested last year for a uh, law set there was a period of non-requesting um funds, so nothing was received. I look at the re receivable for grants and, and some of them were already uh, in 2020 receivable, recorded as a revenue. So I have to be very careful with uh, what projects are reimbursed or which projects are not reimbursed. Um, I completed reimbursements um, as of November for most of the projects and I need to close old projects as well. I don't like when we are um, doing the low set reimbursement for general funds. It's basically a uh, reimbursable basis uh, revenues and I need to go back and, and you know, uh, get this uh, in the right year to, to keep up with revenues. Last year, we didn't get any revenue for us and I am trying to re re recover um, re request, uh, receive money this year. So is your as so will you be recording a receivable as of just June? Is my first question, and then I guess my second question is going forward. Um, maybe keep that separate in another fund so it doesn't exactly. affect the general fund. Exactly, exactly, because uh, that's the confusion about uh, you know th those revenues are. I just don't want to double count this revenue too. Right. And not that not being able to, you know, those are reimbursable funds. Um, so, so I see uh, about 100,000 uh, was requested, and I'm still catching up uh, what's available. So, so that that I need to remove this to the capital projects uh, lines uh, outside of the general fund because it's skewing my revenues. Agreed. Okay. And I, and I also have a problem with, you know. Um, receivable uh, auditor was doing receivable. So um, I have to be careful what he recorded. And I, I think he, he most of the things were already, you know, on the financials last year. So I'm not recording additional one. How, uh, how about the um, health insurance? So that's premium. the tricky part because I have to make sure we budget the way how we could budget. I think our budget is gross uh, on a, health insurance side, since we are self-insured, um, reimbursement is really reimbursement, not the revenue. We we grossing up, um, we paying all bills. Um, and also the budget line doesn't represent, um, it's a premium, but we are self-insured. So I right. had to do additional adjustment after year end. I, I did, uh, uh, went to actuals and I, I, I think, when I was doing actuals versus budget, I was missing piece of uh, WPCA, and I, I have to check uh, that I, I think I tried to put it together, net of um, as expenditure credit, so my balance was equal budget. So I, I have to figure out how to um, do better analysis on our self insurance. Um, because the, the, the revenue uh, could be as well, you know, I, I just want to make sure this is the revenue, not the reimbursement for um, current budget. Our current budget could be, it was uh, in a hole. Um, 
and I was looking at a, a job, uh, looking where the money coming from, really. Are the claims for the health insurance run through the general fund? Yes, everything, Board of Ed and the city and WPCA. So allocation wise, um, I have to make sure we do not double counting. Okay. Agata, to that discussion, it, is it, are you looking at, at establishing a separate internal service fund uh, for, you know, perhaps beginning July 1, 2022? So technically the fund, a uh, separate fund is established. And, and I saw 20, when I saw 2020 audit report, um, it, it's the way how, it technically should be established and outside of the, I move money to the separate checking account and, and I have to really build flow with the new fund. But I need to also f figure out how we're gonna move money outside of general fund. So right now, um, since we're doing pretty well, we don't have really, uh, we have already some savings from uh, designated, I have established like $340,000 reserve for health insurance. So going forward, I probably could add more money to this uh, health insurance reserve account, but still run whole financial to the general fund because um, I have to figure out how to transfer money uh, out of the general fund to, yeah. to supplement the, this, this uh, technically. Right, and I, so I, just, probably, Agatha, I just think that you'd be best served and, and it probably can be facilitated through the budget development process for uh, the 2023 budget, but essentially move out the expenses and, and any associated revenue expectations all out of the general fund and only budget in the general fund, the general funds contribution uh, to that internal mm -hmm. service fund. And, you know, that would be the mechanism really to, to clean it up and, and simplify the process. So if there's any other yeah, funds that are going to contribute, they can then just make their contribution directly to the internal service fund. Yes, I agree. And, and basically we started slowly process of setting this up. But um, uh, at, at this point, I just want to get a good understanding how did we build budget, a health insurance budget. And, uh, you know, with, with many allocations, different, you know, uh, parties involved and what they're paying for, basically, you know, I'm seeing a premium paid. Now we have to have actual paid. And that's the, that's the process I'm trying to uh, get my hand, uh, head around because you're right, uh, simplifying and, and having separate fund would be the best way to go and and, um, and see all those components. Yeah, just and also you know, I think it, having reserves. Capitalizing on the opportunity in front of you, you know, take advantage of the 2023 budget development process to maybe, yeah. uh, you know, institute some of this. Otherwise, you're going to lose a, a whole nother fiscal year in the process if you don't incorporated into the budget development that's likely going to be happening over the next few months. Yeah, and that's the discussion I have to have because, um, you know, um, people are not used to work outside of the general fund. And I, when I had a meeting, you know, we, we they like to see everything uh, in one place. But um, the, the problem is, you know, I cannot operate um, only under general fund. Uh, and I, I am having difficulty with capital, old capital uh, projects, and people like, you know, I don't have really room to, 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 I need to expand, I need to expand outside of the general fund. It sounds to me like that software will need to be prioritized because you can't make some of the advances that you need to make without having better software in place. Yes, but also I need a cooperation with, with with the board, and I need to buy, let them know that I'm I'm gonna build something different than they used to, and that's yeah. also you know. Yeah. Well, they're gonna stuff, have to accept something different because that's just good accounting. Oh. Yeah, 
standards. But, you know, people saw something, uh, you know, changes are sometimes hard to implement because people see same um, reports, same things, and, and like, you know, do, I, for example, you know, I don't have enough uh, chart of accounts. I need to expand. I need to get a better, you know, detail on a budget, and I need to start building better budget, too. That That's the next step to get everything under, you know, recorded properly. And Agata, in the budget development process that, that's coming about, uh, you know, as has been discussed, there's two big things on the horizon at some point. One is going to be a new financial management system, and two is going to be the integration of the Board of Ed. And none of that is going to go well if, if, if you don't get some support and help within your department. It, Correct. Um, you know, that, you know, I would give serious consideration to really looking at the staffing uh, in the, the mechanism within the finance department, you know, it sounds like you're going to be upgrading the deputy position, which is great. Uh, you mentioned earlier that there's, I think, one other accountant, you know, if, if you need additional staffing, you know, to, to ramp up so that, you know, there, there's a, a, a good chance that you'll be successful with these big initiatives, um, you know, I, I would just suggest, you know, building that into the budget request so you've got that situated and, and can proceed. Well, I think we might yeah, also I want to issue a letter from the um, commission um, mm -hmm. reaffirming the recommendation that the software system needs to be updated, the office needs to be appropriately staffed. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm just looking at the corrective action plan. There's still a lot of things on here that are listed as partially implemented. Um, and Kate, we received, I think most of those, this is what I was gonna to touch upon was, it, I think that the updates, unless Agata says differently, might've come from the prior uh, finance. And I'm not sure that this would be uh, Agata's uh, interpretation of where these corrective actions are. Oh, well, that's not so good. Or I, 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 that's my guess um, because item number six, where it says bank reconciliations, um, it was stated that that would be completed in the second quarter of 22, which that would be December. Are you going to be complete with all reconciliations of bank um, by December? I'm sorry, which? Uh, the one I'm looking at has that as number two, and it says first quarter fiscal 22. So yeah, that should be done by now. Correct. So and, we, and she so hasn't we, received information from Board of Ed. So um, my uh, bank reconciliation are done. Okay. I'm I only can control my bank reconciliation in my department. I, uh, at this point, I um, have confidence that Board of Ed doing uh, best they can to provide auditor their information. Um, so the Board of Ed has their own that, bank accounts that they reconcile? Exactly. Okay. So mm -hmm. we're, not, we're not on a zero balance accounting here. We are, um, they having own revenue streams. Uh, they collecting, uh, you know, um, revenues. Um, what I, I understand, they have own system of, um, you know, um, bank records. So I have a bunch of... Uh, bank uh, accounts on my ledger and I don't have updated information. I only have, uh, I put it on uh, expenditure on my line. Uh, so th with that being said, uh, I'm sure we paid more money to fund uh, exp uh, education expenditures because uh, when I came uh, in July, uh, the practice was to give full budget budget uh, amounts to the board of ed cash wise so everything was paid um, at this point i'm waiting for request for funding um so it, it's a little bit different right now but i'm waiting for them to catch up with uh reconciliations and start the process your board you're not a regional school district are you no. Mm -hmm. And you, when you say you give the Board of Ed the full budget, um, who draws their checks? 
or you they have their own bank accounts for drawing checks. Who maintains the cash? So originally, I think the practice was to give a uh, ten percent of the budget every month. Now they send a request for funding to me. Okay. And I ask them to provide me with their ledger for payables or payroll. Okay. To fund their activities. Okay. All right. Um, so we, we're going to get there. I think that the, uh, the idea is to get the uh, right people to help them to structure their trial balance, reconciling problem. They also have a short, uh, they short staff. And uh, I understand being, you know, people are not being uh, replaced or being, you know, short staff. It's very hard uh, to produce results. Okay, um, Madam yes. Chair, Kate. Yes, uh, sorry. One question, since we're talking about the Board of Ed, um, and I know that we want to issue a letter. You're suggesting we issue a letter from the Commission. Um, do you feel that it would be appropriate for us to invite the superintendent and their finance person to our next meeting in February? And prior to doing that, they will have a letter of what um, what we feel the Commission needs. Um, from their finance area because I, yeah, I do. I would like to have them. Um, yes. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm just making notes here as I'm yep. going yep. along of things that I want to put in the letter. Yep. Um, okay. Um, Becky, did you have questions? Agatha, I, I just, uh, when, when you were with us in August, I mentioned several areas um, with respect to the pension and OPEP plans in terms of setting conservative assumptions and making a plan to, to get the, the funding of those uh, programs back on track. Um, I noticed that the pension valuations are done in odd numbered years. Um, so 2021 valuations would be presumably underway now. Has there been any activity? I mean, I know you're you're dealing with a, a lot of things, but any activity with your board of finance in terms of of taking a look at the way in which the pension liabilities are calculated and um, and making a plan to address getting the plans to fully funded? Um, so yes, we started open and a pension valuation right now. I'm working with um, actuaries. Uh, to the census uh, data. Um, the hard part is to, to get for that as well, uh, get um, information. So we're going to have a new um, valuation reports. I hope, you know, in a few months or, you know, within a month or two. So, so I think getting new information will be helpful to review them. Also, uh, board should be aware of that uh, we don't have a trust. Uh, fund. Uh, we're doing, uh, you know, OPEP. We don't do really OPEP funding, maybe with healthy fund balance. We could do some, uh, you know, uh, extra um, reserves for OPEP and setting up the trust. I have no idea how they, um, you know, I need to really get current information and have a chance to talk to the new board. Um, mm -hmm. It's a great to, to start the process because new people are going to be in the, you know, on the board for for few, two years. So, so we, we have a chance right now to, to open this, have this open discussion with healthy fund balance and with, you know, um, creating good reserve will be this is a good opportunity. Mm -hmm. Well, I, you know, as as I noted in in August, it looks like there's been some some um, fairly long-standing under contributions to the pension plans, and no funding of the OPEP benefits. Um, so, and and that's on the basis of what may be somewhat high interest rate assumptions. So, I think it's important to have a realistic measurement of liability so you really have a good understanding of where things stand now and then use that as the basis to to form a plan that not only 
this budget and next year's budget are, are, are including full funding of those liabilities, but that there's a sound basis for continuing to do that going forward. Yes, I agree that that's kind of um, taken. I would say yes. It just just that um, we need to. I need to really communicate with the board about needs of getting um, reserve to be uh, set up reserves for for OPEC and pension. Okay. Nothing further, Kate. Okay. Um, John. Did we lose John? He's on mute, Kate. John, if yeah, he's you off have mute. A... I have... Okay. <laughs> <Go for it. laughs> uh, just, Hi, John. A, just a couple of quick things here. One, I'll just reiterate what other people have been saying is, it seems like you've got some significant problems in getting the system in place and and getting really the tools to get a hold of the problem. And I would support. Uh, also having the, uh, the the board of ed involved, et cetera, and anything for support. Uh, two, uh, getting a hold of the general fund is usually only half the problem and sometimes the easier part. Uh, I am concerned about, you know, payments into the pension fund. Um, uh, for, uh, interest rates used for that, uh, post-retirement uh, health benefits, um, the usual problem so i i wish you good luck in your uh your work here because it's clearly it's uh it started and you've you've got a lot ahead of you but uh anything we can do to support that i would uh i would support thank you tony tony do you have any questions okay maybe we lost tony um all right um another so person is having trouble finding the mute button <laughs> um you know i'm looking at this letter that we need to send um we need to encourage the town and the board of ed to have appropriate staffing levels the financial system um Updating the financial system should be a priority so that we can have um, the funds you know, separated, the ones that need to be created, created, um, but have things like the capital projects separate from the general fund. Um, don't board of ed handling of cash and bank recs. I think you know we need them in here and we need to see what's going on with that and get that they need to be done on a regular basis. Um, not sure how we feel about the Board of Ed doing their own stuff. Um, I don't know what's lost in terms of interest income by letting the Board of Ed have cash, but we need to address the grand list issues um, when establishing a budget. And this one is, you know, kind of timely when establishing the budget, they need to be sure that the mill rate upon which or the, the grand list upon which the mill rate is based is accurate. Um, Sorry, I got disconnected. Oh, okay. I was just running through the list of things that I think we need in a letter to um, to Derby. So I do um, have a couple of quick questions. So go ahead. Wrap up. Um, the first was that I can't press upon enough the uh, what, what Mike had said about the staffing, and I, I was wondering. Um, I know you're uh, in the process of trying to hire a deputy, and uh, I was wondering if there's support for maybe even getting additional staffing, even if it's temporary staffing to keep on board until you're able to accomplish some of these uh, bigger items, because it seems like um, you, know, you, you may start to fall further behind unless some of these other items are accomplished. Uh, we talk, I have already uh, hired temporary staff who help me. Are you gonna keep um, them on? Well, as you, even when as you- As I them. need it, yes. Yeah, until I fill this uh, position, and maybe longer. Um, that that's the idea. I, I have a green light and a budget um, uh, adjustment for, for this particular reason. So I have support from the board. That's I okay. just don't know how long uh, how long we're gonna you know how I need to now move on to those other projects 
which are not the basic one, more elaborate, more um, different, uh, creating different things. So, so there's lots of things to be covered, but uh, I think I have support already. And, and as I said, I'm, I'm happy to have, uh, you know, November uh, 2021 bank recs under the belt because it, it's, it's, a, it's a good feeling. Um, <laughs> So uh, my other question is, and you, you might not even have thought about this with all the other things you have going on, but um, uh, uh, maybe as a, another way to get some additional funding, um, have you thought about the, um, do you have any revenue losses or have you thought about how you would use the ARPA funding for, uh, you may have asked this question while I was disconnected, but um, how you can use that to help support your operation or? you've had revenue loss very interesting um i i was uh <laughs> that's my battle is because um arpa fund I, I i would love to uh not to be part of the, you know i would love to have a uh grant manager who takes care of the arpa funds and i maybe be pushed to to take care of uh, uh, you know managing the arpa grant which adds up more to my job right. uh 10 to 12 hours a day job so so <laughs> it's it, it, right now mm. i may be you know trying to hire someone for grant purposes uh to help me with the process um uh, because we need more work with grants than you know regular budget but um i don't know what's going to happen if i can use arpa funds to have staffing uh staff uh you know, temporary person helping me out with grants and other uh, issues. I don't know. Um, I didn't have really time to, to, to go uh, through the, um, you know, what's uh, appropriate spending right. to ARPA grant. However, we already spend uh, money on ARPA buying the ambulance. So we start going uh, through the process of using uh, federal grant money, and I need to put uh, policies in a place because having federal grants, we need to have policies too. So there's extra work to be done too. Uh, maybe that's a good point. I may need to have a grant manager through ARPA grant uh, funding to help out Okay, um, so and Tony, I know you missed the list I ran through of things to be included in a letter. Um, do any of the commissioners have other things that they would like to have included in a letter to Derby um, for actions that we believe should be taken? Your end closing, Kate, is uh, for the audit. It, it has been behind greater than a year every single year. So um, we they need to hit the target of completing their audit and at this point, I'm, I'm. It, it really sounds like, based on uh, the the work that still needs to be done and the unknowns of the board of ed, I, I can only mm -hmm. see that that they're they're they're. We'll be lucky if we see them again by June thirtieth of this year uh, of twenty two. And last year they did not get filed with us until after June thirtieth of twenty two uh, yeah. of uh, twenty one. Twenty one. So yeah, yeah, yeah. May I so, may I say something? So audit is on a target right now. Okay, good. We, uh, but I, I but you I'm here. No, but you don't have the balance sheet information from the board of ed. So I assume um, will be clean. Uh, it's going to be presented very soon by the end of December. Okay. 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 Because Anybody? work uh, already started. Um, you know, uh, so, so so auditor is. Uh, already started the, the process of audit. Right, but you've only got at this point um, three weeks, yeah. basically. Um, so I think we want to just reiterate in the letter that we expect um, timely filing of your annual audit. Um, so, so also historically speaking, um, I believed since there was no monthly reconciliation, Sure. Board of Ed assumes that only pre prepares information for auditor when auditors come in. <laughs> so that's the problem I'm thinking are we having because historically, you know, um, was like we don't have to do much until audit 
is upon us. So, so I think this is the case when, you know, there's no habit of doing monthly stuff, uh, but it has to be in place. Okay. So that's <clears throat> one of the things we might want to know is that um, regular monthly reconciliations of the board of ed to the city must take place. Month end closings. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Anything else from commissioners to include in a letter? I, speak up. I think I think before they start to spend ARPA money, if they do not have a policy and a grant manager to be able to supervise this on top of all of the work that is already, um, you know, backlogged and systems that need to be played, their additional staffing, not just the regular staffing, additional yeah. staffing is needed. And they should have somebody who has uh, the skill set to be able to oversee the ARPA funds. Okay. Bill, did you get all that stuff? Yeah, I think I got it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, thank you. I, I you know um, you've got a lot of work ahead of you. I gotta. It's right. Um, right. It's going to take some time, and um, I think we, you know, you've got to get. We're we're trying to write this letter to be supportive, so that right your elected officials understand that you need the staffing, you need the software improvements in order to be able to do a um, proper accounting and reporting um, and in a timely manner. Okay. I think staffing first. Um, it is. Yeah, yeah. It is. But we, you know, we, we need to get it. A lot needs to happen and, and can't be, um, can't be continued to be put off. Um, all right. Are we good to move on to Hamden? And I believe we have a new mayor in Hampton. Good morning. Hi, I'm Mayor Lauren Garrett. Uh, I have with me our Deputy Finance Director, Rick Galarza, and my Chief of Staff, Sean Grace. Uh, we also have on the call David Capaletti, our auditor. Um, so we, uh, we have a new administration and a new council, and we're, we're definitely getting to work. Um, but we have quite a bit to do. Um, so I've made an offer to uh, a person to be our next finance director, and um, we're not ready to release any information about that, but um, I believe at the next meeting, we will have a finance director to join us. Okay. Um, and uh, Rick Alarza is going to uh, present to you our, our finances. Okay. Good morning, everyone. So, uh, as as Mayor Garrett mentioned, uh, on the, on our line is also uh, Dave Capoletti who, uh, from Claremont, who's also who is our external auditor. So, uh, he will be chiming in at some points. Uh, so, we want to begin this morning with discussing our year-end uh, results for fiscal year. 2021. We're currently projecting a favorable four million dollars payroll to our fund balance. That'll put the town back in the black. I think that's been the highest it's been over uh, uh, a decade. So we're making uh, advancements in, in our revenue and our expenses. Uh, so we should have a favorable uh, year end. Currently, we're wrapping up the audit. Uh, I believe we're going to apply for a, an extension to the audit due to the uh, uh, delayed information on the, on the pension side. Uh, our lawyer is also working on the pension side for the audit. And uh, uh, that should be probably completed by, hopefully by January and we'll forward along to the state. Uh, so that brings us into the current fiscal year, fiscal year 2021-22. Uh, currently for the first four months, we provided a summary report with our revenues and our expenditures. Also we provided line item detail. I know it's, it's a lot of information, but we wanna be as transparent as possible uh, with, with the state and our external uh, resources and our, uh, our the individuals that review our finances, our stakeholders. So uh, for the, for the, what you have in front of you is our results for the first four months. So our revenues, our budget is 2.6, uh, 2, 2, 200, uh, $262 million. And our actuals to, for the first four months are 134 million, which is uh, resulting in, 51% actuals received by the town, 
the target should be around 33.2. So we're ahead there. And also our expenditures of $262 million. Our actual expenses are 83.7 million, which is around 32%. So we're trending nicely where we should be at around this time of year. Uh, giving you, giving the state a little bit more detail, the MFAC committee will jump into revenues for the current year. Uh, last fiscal year, we took a conservative approach as we built our revenues for fiscal year 21-22. Our budget does not include any COVID uh, uh, receivables within the general fund. Those will be housed outside of the general fund uh, and, 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 and a dedicated fund outside uh, so that we can report the income that comes in from the state or the federal government uh, uh, supported by uh, the, the expenditure reports. Uh, currently, we have a strong cash flow. We have no payments that are in default. We also manage, you know, the, the board's payments. They're, they're current as well. Uh, our, our taxes make up of 83% of the budget, which is around $217 million. Uh, that's our major account. Uh, so in our current year, our taxes, are, we've collected 51%, uh, around 100 and, uh, 151% of $198 million. Uh, all of our other tax accounts are above 50% in collections, so that's faring favorable for the first for the you know for the first quarter of the year. We just completed our supplemental tax billings, and those are going to go out. And we're in the process of working on our second round of tax collection, which will be released for January. Uh, and that that concludes the revenue. So we feel comfortable with our revenue projections and and are what we've realized to date. Uh, moving on to our expenditures, personal services, we're holding the line. Uh, we're filling vacancies on a case-by-case -case basis. The mayor established a, uh, a hiring, uh, a hiring uh, committee where we review uh, all, the, all the potential vacancies. We discuss with the department heads. We include the HR director, the finance director, the operating department. We're prioritizing our vacancies on a, need, uh, on a priority need uh, fill basis. Uh, that's working out fine. We currently had uh, 15 retirees uh, in the organization, mostly in our guardians, police and fire. We were able to uh, uh, anticipate last fiscal year of their cash outs. So we have sufficient funds to, to manage their cash outs. Uh, we are projecting payroll savings. Uh, I haven't booked that in our the summary sheet uh, yet, but uh, we, we are uh, we will realize savings on the payroll side, hopefully around $800,000. Uh, once you know there, there will be some offsets uh, for increased overtime in some areas, but I think we've we've had conversations. The mayor had conversations with the fire department, the police department, and we feel sort of comfortable that we we made some revised budgets uh, that went to council for approval and they have been approved. So we feel comfortable on that end. Uh, our non personnel lines we're tracking with the budget. We're involved with the uh, a co op with the Connecticut uh, uh, consortium for fuel, which co helps us. Uh, you know, reduce our, our expenses for unleaded diesel and heating. We're, project, we're projecting about $100,000 savings there for just being involved with the co-op. So we are looking for other ways to uh, save money and, and getting involved in more, more programs that will yield savings. Uh, moving on, our medical, our contributions from the town, uh, which, you know, we have a self-insurance fund that we make a donation from the town to the fund. We also have our active retirees making contributions for their premiums and also the board. Although we manage the town's uh, medical benefits, we do have contributions coming from the board. And uh, right now we're ahead of, we're ahead of our uh, we're ahead of our expenses by a million dollars uh, for the year. So if, if we were to analyze that, it put us in a favorable position. But uh, we've been talking to our medical advisors, and, and the issue is with COVID, we're not really sure where we're at with our billing. But right now we have more we have more revenue and expense in our fund. Uh, and and that, that's favorable. Uh, moving on to our pensions, we funded our pension arc uh, for the current fiscal year at 101% higher than the requirement. Uh, currently, we're, yield, we're yielding, uh, yielding uh, favorable returns. We're anticipating uh, to, to have a resumption calculation. So it may fa favor fa uh, favorable uh, to the town, which would uh, bring down uh, what we have to pay for the, for the pension fund. Uh, and, and generate some savings. We're also having preliminary discussions on our POBs because they're coming up to a, a point where of maturity where we can refinance those POBs and, and save uh, additional in our in our debt service payments. Uh, that brings us to our debt service. Uh, currently, we're paying 20, 23.9 million dollars. That's what we have budgeted. Our, our current payments are 17.3. 
So in the summary sheet, uh, we know that's pretty much a, a solid fact. So we highlighted the uh, potential savings of $6.6 .6 million that we're gonna yield uh, uh, at, at the end of the fiscal year, assuming everything goes well. The charter protects us from drawing out of the debt service. So we have some controls in place. Uh, I, I, I believe the mayor mentioned that we're gonna be working on a, a debt service uh, a fund balance policy. If not, she'll elaborate a little bit further on that. I know she's having some conversations with leadership. Uh, but we are working toward uh, establishing a policy now that we do have a, a fund balance. And uh, so if you take that six plus our four, we're headed in the right direction. Uh, our, our, we presented to the state about a year ago our, our, our deficit mitigation plan, re, a fund balance restructure that we're working on. Uh, this is our, our second of the third year. We're moving in the right direction. We just have to finalize uh, our next, our final step, which would be uh, just, you know, the mayor's interested in having dialogues with our financial advisor and our bond council. Uh, we had some conversations with uh, uh, some, some, some of our representatives at Wall Street. So uh, we're looking to do that uh, implementation probably, or we'll go out to bond uh, probably around March with our capital plan and the mayor discussed a little bit more about our capital plan. I know that's on the agenda. So that will yield us hopefully another eight to $10 million. So we're looking for a favorable fund balance over uh, two years, we should we should be hitting our target that we started a couple years ago. Uh, and our, our, the final uh, area that we want to cover is the board. We've had conversations with the superintendent and the and the finance director. We're online. Uh, they're, they're 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 supporting us with their grants on our medical. We work close together with leadership. We have a we have a great relationship. I know the mayor has a great relationship with the superintendent and with the uh, with the board. So that's 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 positive for the town. Uh, so as we approach uh, our third quarter, we have a better trajectory on where we're going to be at our year-end numbers for 21-22. Uh, Probably our next meeting or so, we'll, we'll, we'll tighten it up a little bit, but we really have to just see where we're at with our next round of our, our tax collection. Um, that's all I have. I don't know if our external auditor may want to have a comment or if you have questions, feel free to ask. Questions. Okay, the $4 million add to, to fund balance, where'd that come from? That came from uh, the first year of our deficit mitigation plan. So we had a deficit of a couple million dollars. So if you take what we saved in our expenses uh, for our debt service, if you net that, if you take our debt service savings of, I uh, believe, around $6 million, uh, uh, 6.2, and we net out what we had uh, uh, our negative fund balance for the, for 1920, you net out around three to four million dollars. Okay, because you didn't provide us with 2021 results here. Right, because I was going to give you the audit. Eh, well, yeah, it's, but you didn't, so. Um, yeah, we're not completed, but we can forward that to you. That's not a problem. Yeah, we we'd like to see the um, 2021 results or, you know, preliminary results because okay. otherwise, you know, there's a lot of information missing. Okay, um, we'll receive those today. Okay. Um, you're talking about a fund balance policy. Do you have, have you considered yet what target you're going to have in that policy as a percentage of revenue or expenditures? Well, we, we, we can follow the guidelines by GFOA. Okay. Uh, but for right now, I, I don't know if we're that close to those guidelines. Uh, we can look at a 10%, 5%. I know the former finance director, Scott Jackson, was, was, was uh, calling around to various uh, municipalities just to see what they had. And we're going to try to compile some information. So uh, we will we will have those discussions with the mayor and, and leadership to see where they're comfortable, uh, and we'll give them best practices, and then we'll come back and we'll report that back to the okay. state. Okay. Um, you talked about. Um, you said your revenues are um, at fifty one percent. In particular, your tax collections are at 51%. How does that compare to last year at this time? Last year around this time, it's, it, it was, it, we're doing better this year. We're trending it better this year. Uh, and the reason why is because we were conservative on areas like our back taxes, our motor vehicle taxes. So we brought those accounts down with what we're experiencing for, we'll give you an example, our back taxes, we've budgeted uh, $2 million and we've already collected 1.7. Okay. So things like that are, are increasing our, our, you know, the more conservative we are on our revenues, 
as we realize our expenses, it puts us in a higher percent collection at the beginning of the fiscal year. Okay. Um, I noticed on our agenda, we wanted a status update on um, the management letter from fiscal 20 and what you have done. And I don't see that that was included in our information. So um, are you able to talk to um, what was in your management letter last year and where you stand with all those recommendations? Yes, uh, we have, uh, I, I thought, uh, you know, former Director Jackson had sent that uh, to, to Mr. Plummer, but I guess not. I mean, I, we have Dave, we have our auditor online. He may want to be able to give you a brief update on that. If not, I can fill in and we can provide something in writing after the meeting. Dave, would you like to speak on that? Are we let him into the group? Uh, I'm, I'm happy to help. It's probably more Thank of you. a management discussion, but uh, if, if the board has any questions, I mean, we've looked into some of these issues. Um, and if Hamden wants to speak on their behalf, I'll be welcome to. Well, I'm looking to find out where they stand with recommendations from the prior um, audit. Yeah. Have you? Uh, are they? Are you satisfied that they're making appropriate progress? So, in some areas, you know, one of our largest concerns, obviously, is there's a uh, um, the increase of the arcs has caused strains uh, on their finances, which has been spreading throughout the. Uh, funds. Um, and so there's been a positive movement into there. Um, so uh, they have corrected some of the issues, especially in the insurance uh, risk and in the um, uh, enterprise funds, uh, which I'm happy to see. Um, they're having the problems I think everyone's having as far as filling some of these finance positions and to keeping people long enough to have a, um, um, a history of some of their long term issues. And so that's, you know, obviously that's a position that's still open. And so that was one of our recommendations that they, uh, they fill these positions. Um, uh, fund balance, um, you know, we've been um, requesting for years that I, you know, the fund balance should be increased. And, uh, you know, um, uh, Rick did just say that they're bringing in around $7 million general fund surplus uh, mixed with one time revenues and um, reoccurring revenues. Um, so there's good, some good news there with the fund balance, and uh, and now they just need to develop a plan so that they um, could move forward with uh, maintaining that and also having a reoccurring um, um, balance. As far as the general fund operation budgets, again, we're looking at the strains of the arc uh, and and um, um, and some of their um, budgets uh, numbers from two three years ago just weren't realistic. Um, and uh, also, um, there were some one-time items that were hurting them because of COVID-related expenses, plus for this benefit and for the uh, um, hurting them. Um, so we're seeing a lot of corrections with those. Obviously, they had a large property tax increase last year, which is also helping the situation. Um, let's see, as I'm going through the management letter. Um, the... Um, yeah, I mean, some of the, let's see, that's the capital projects. I mean, the capital projects has been cleaned up, um, you know, and I think they're still developing a plan. Rick, is that correct? Uh, they have a uh, subcommittee with the uh, council on the capital project funds. We just want to see those neatened up a little bit more and have a, uh, a uh, tighter plan as far as the expenses of capital projects and the um, actions of the uh, residual equities in those projects. Um, we just think that if you clean up the pipeline in the capital projects funds, it would help with the uh, funding of further capital projects and reduce their debt. But uh, we'll see with that. Um, I, there's, we also have a comment here about the, um, maybe that they don't have a formal indirect rate for their grants. Um, I, 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 there's been no work on that. Um, but that's that's a smaller issue. Okay. Um, the town. Um, I know that this is an area where COVID. I I know that the school they have several school construction programs that uh, have not been reimbursed, uh, waiting for the state audits, and they have some issues with the state audits. Um, so I don't. I think that's more of a COVID issue as well, as they haven't been able to carry that through. Some of those are over ten years old, by the way. The, um, wow. Okay. Yeah, it's not unusual, unfortunately, and nowadays, you know, in that area, it's that we're finding a lot of uh, 
towns and cities uh, not getting the reimbursements uh, on those. Um, and then we went through the, the, you know, these are some of the areas where they they allowed the uh, um, the um, fund deficit to basically spread over other funds. The, you know, the two areas that we did of concern with the insurance risk, uh, where they lost the ability to um, uh, bond um, because it lapsed. Uh, but they are funding that. I see that, which is good. And then the ice rink, I think there was some crash, corrections with that. Uh, the story with the ice rink is they pulled it out of the general fund uh, a few years ago and then maintained a operating deficit for three years. Uh, so we wanted that to be corrected. Um, otherwise, the general fund would have to uh, fund that deficit. Fund it. Yeah. I mean, we. Okay. And I think that's, uh, I think I went through most of what the management letter uh, was put into play, uh, what, what our suggestions were. Okay. Um, all right, let me um, open up to other commissioners. Kim, you're on mute, Kim. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I'll let I'll let others go first. Forgive me. Okay, Tony. Uh, yes. Uh, first, I wanted to just say that I was uh, as well disappointed that I didn't see any uh, 2021 results. As um, you know, I was I was very curious to see how you how you did that year. And uh, you know wh how you were heading. So uh, those would be, it would be great to see that information, uh, including a, a um, an analysis of your fund balance and where you were, where you are, and where you hope to be uh, would be helpful for us. Um, I, I do have one question, and that's um, with the new administration: Is there a, going to be a continued um, priority on the rest, restoring your fund balance and your conservative budget practices as you move forward? Absolutely. I'll be working with the council to establish a fund balance policy and uh, having a healthy fund balance is critical for our town. Okay, thank you. Um, John? Yeah, I've got a, I've, I've got a question and a comment. First is the presentation was, was rather rapid fire and I understand there's a lot to cover, but uh, there was one thing that I missed and I wanted a little more clarification of. You said something that you did something that was going to reduce the contributions into the pension fund. Can you go over that again? No, we, we currently, John, we currently have our pension fund funded. The ARP is funded at 101 uh, percent due to and, and, and I think the assumptions that the actuarials did was based on six or seven percent returns. I think I, I talked to the external auditor. I think we're around between 20 and 22 percent on our returns. So we were just wondering if Siegel would would consider doing a you know uh, true up those figures based on our returns. And and they did this I think last year that what we had budgeted uh, what what the actual ARC requirement was less than what was budgeted. So the general fund had an opportunity to save some money on the budget. If not, we're funded at 101 percent. And we're current on all our pension payments, so uh, we're just we're, we're we're anticipating. Hopefully, that if, if it is true, up we may have we may realize savings on our contribution. If not, the contribution is funded. We'll, we'll be fine. Okay. Well, if I can make a a, a comment on that, which is uh, my other one, is that uh, if you're actually getting 22 percent, uh, I don't think anybody's going to maintain 22 percent return uh, unless they're in excessively risky assets. And to uh, compute your your pension mm -hmm. uh, payments long term on that would be foolish in the extreme. Okay. Um, and it also would indicate that maybe your pension fund is invested in things that are riskier than it should be. Uh, second thing, it, it was a little bit disappointing that that when Kate asked about the the, the response to the. Uh, the the comment letter from the prior year it, it was pitched to the uh the external auditor um that is something that everybody should be familiar with and and, and where they are particularly if they're key findings so um the auditor will have his say when he comes with today this year's commentary and uh, compliance letter but uh that's just my opinion thank you Mike. Thank you. Um, if I could just ask you to speak uh, a little bit to what your your plan is for the 2023 budget development process. 
Uh, do you have or anticipate putting a budget development committee together? And uh, what is the calendar timeline for when uh, the mayor's proposed budget needs to be submitted uh, to your board? Sure. Uh, so in January, I'll be talking with department heads and they'll present their departmental budgets to me. Um, and I need to put it all together and present to the council uh, mid-March. Uh, and then our council uh, reviews the budget with department heads, uh, deliberates, and they have to have their budget finalized by the middle of May. Have you given directives to department heads yet on you know what you're looking for in the budget? Not yet. Um, we've been uh, we've been here for a week and a half. So oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Um, so um, any grace you can give me uh, for this meeting would be much appreciated. Yeah, I just I forget that you know our our change in administration happens like almost immediately. Um, I realize that other people have different schedules. Um, okay, sorry, Mike. No, that's okay. Uh, thank you. I, I just, uh, when the direction or when you're meeting with your department heads, I, I, I think, you know, the ask I think on our end is just some of the themes that we've talked about, uh, you know, the maintaining of, of, of budget practices of uh, that have been incorporated, it sounds like in, in the last budget in the current year budget from the standpoint of of you know basing the revenue estimates based on reasonable assumptions uh properly budgeting uh, you know to make sure those are incorporated into the budget and it doesn't sound like you'll have much flexibility as far as uh providing with through the budget directly a, an additional contribution if you will into fund balance but I think when all is said and done, if there's there's any opportunity for that um, to have a, you know a contribution back into fund balance, uh, that would certainly be a statement if if that's incorporated into the budget. Thank you, um, Becky. Yes. Um, good. Good morning. I'll just point you to the um, the comments I made back in August. Um, none of you were there, of course. Um, but as as the actuary, I'm, I'm very concerned about the metrics I see with both your pension and OPEB liabilities, the low funded ratio of the pension plan and no prefunding for OPEB. Um, I I recommended back in August that, that you have an experience study performed to ensure that the actuarial assumptions being used to measure the liability are, are accurate. At that time, uh, Mr. Jackson had indicated that there, there was authority that had been granted to perform an experience study, and I wonder if one has been done. Not yet. We can follow up with Siegel. We can follow up with our actuarials and provide that information at our next meeting. Yeah, I, I think it's a very important due diligence um, step to take. GFOA guidelines are to have one done every five years. Uh, more often isn't a bad idea, but uh, annual review of the interest rate assumption certainly would be appropriate to make sure that you're not using an unrealistically high assumption. That's mm -hmm. the most important assumption and then I'd, I'd strongly encourage you to look at um, a long-term plan to addressing your OPEB liabilities because those are significant and significantly growing annual expenditures that you're not pre-funding right now and they will continue to put budgetary pressure on you if you, if you um, are not taking steps to address it. All right, thank you. Um, Diane. I think I'm good right now, Kate. Everybody addressed a lot of what my concerns were. Okay. Glenn? Um, yeah, I think John and uh, Becky covered uh, a lot with regards to pension and OPEP because I did see that the OPEP uh, liability is growing at, at a, a very high rate. And always, whenever assumptions are changed on a pension, 
valuation. Um, that's where most of the problems seem to come from. And it's kind of like gas prices. The assumption to raise the return goes up quick, but then it stays through times when it's not producing so much and it usually creates a, a problem. Um, but the only question that I have after those was, um, you talked about that phase three in the deficit mitigation plan. Um, in past refundings, the town has done restructuring um, in, in their refundings. And I, I you know, point to the one most recently in 21 that three quarters of the issue was refunding and some was capital projects. I guess my question is for the anticipated uh, bond issue that you talked about for March. Um, are, are we anticipating another restructuring? Is that part of that mitigation? Um, does it include capital uh, projects as well? And what does that do to set up for capital spending going forward? So, uh, yes, we do anticipate some uh, debt restructuring. Uh, we have to meet with our financial advisors to determine how much that will be. Uh, the council, uh, the previous council approved a plan for about $10 million in capital spending. Uh, the current council and my administration are reviewing uh, that bonding um, to see how much we need to put in place. And then in March, we would um, do the, the third leg of the uh, deficit mitigation plan, which includes restructuring as well as go to market for uh, the capital, uh, capital bond. Did we ever get, I mean, I'm fairly new to the, the commission it, it, is, did we get that mitigation plan or is it possible to get that? And then a summary of what the results have been. Right. So we had gotten the plan in the past and, um, I was just making notes on a letter, um, for Hamden as well. And I'm thinking we want to have an update on that plan, um, <clears throat> where the plan stands, what they what they have done. Um, I think it's time to get get that. So we'll ask for that. Great. Thank you. Okay, Kim. Had to find the mute button. <laughs> um, one thing I do want to praise uh, the administration for in the finance area is that. Um, in my comments from uh, the August meeting, we we struggled with looking at their financials and we didn't have a summary. And we did work with um, the town to be able to, you know, share with them a format that would be wor uh, workable for us. And so I do want to give praise that they did um, follow through and provide us with a, a, a quick summary rather than all of that detail. Um, I don't know if you're doing this longhand and putting it in an Excel or if it's coming out of the system, but um, hopefully it's not strenuous, but I want to tell you that it is helpful for us to see everything um, on a on a high level. What, what it does not provide um, um, is, again, the it's it really focuses on the operation side of life, but it doesn't give us any kind of summary as you start to look forward on the balance sheet side of life. So I think that you've made some really good measures, but I think that there's still more to be done um, so that you can produce interim reporting on the balance sheet as well as um, as I would call it the profit and loss. Okay, thank you. Um, Got a question for you. I seem to recall, you know, the vacancy in the finance director position. Um, are you one of the towns where the finance director is appointed for a term that runs with the mayor? Yes. Okay. Is there any consideration being given? I know you just started a week ago to changing that. Um, uh, so we have, uh, we'll be opening up our charter uh, for some revisions this December. Um, and I, I think that I can, I can send that along to the committee, um, and make a recommendation. You know, I think my thinking is as a former finance director for one, but you know, this is a position it's highly critical. Um, it's one of the few positions in a community where they are knowledgeable and, um, in you know, all the various departments and to um, 
you know, open that subject to change every time the administration changes. You know, I just think you you lose so much. And it's also a thing that um, I think can make it difficult for you to attract good candidates because, um, you know, who wants to go to take a job where, you know, you might lose it in two years? Um, you know, that's risky for your career. So uh, I would encourage you to consider um, changing that. Um, all right, so I'm thinking we should follow up with a letter. Um, we wanna highlight, you know, working on the pension and OPEB liabilities. Um, Becky, maybe you can give, give Bill the language or Bill, you know, you know the kind of questions Becky was asking. Um, we want to encourage the adoption of a fund balance policy. Yes. Um, would like to have an update on the corrective action plan from the audit. We'd like to see those 2021 results as soon as possible and an update on the deficit mitigation plan. Um, what else would commissioners like to encourage that Hamden get back to us with? Anybody? I think that would do it. What about ARPA and ARPA plan? Uh, if, if has uh, no, ARPA funds been used? Yeah, so to get a, yeah, no, a plan on that, yeah. Yes, um, so about $6 million of ARPA was used in the um, previous uh, budget. It was budgeted for in revenue. Uh, and for the remainder of ARPA, we will be setting up community meetings and getting input um, and the council will be approving uh, expenditures. Okay. That's good. Anything else? Can I didn't, like yeah, I, sorry, Kay, I didn't know that, um, I don't recall that the, the funds were used, but I did recall that they had budgeted for it. Um, but uh, yeah, an overview of ARPA would be helpful. Hmm. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. And um, we'll see you in February. Thank you. Um, okay. So Ellington, I believe um, we have information update from Ellington. Uh, um, and I believe the new first selectman has joined us. If you want to um, say hello, and we were just looking for a data submission, but if you want to tell us anything, um, you have the floor. Kate, if I could just interrupt, Ellington's a bond client as well. Okay, thank you. And the first selectman had won her election. She is a returning. Okay. Oh, but I don't think we've seen, okay. No, we haven't met her. We, uh, her finance person would show in the past. Okay. So Ms. Bielma, do you, do you want to talk to us at all or? <clears throat> okay. Not hearing anything. Um, all right, in Plymouth, um, Plymouth had, I don't think we have anybody here from Plymouth. Um, we had a change there in, or, Hi, this is Grace Zweig. I am the interim finance director. Okay. The town of Plymouth. And we don't have any information from Plymouth at all in our packets. Yeah, um, I just started three weeks ago. I got the uh, the request for it like the day it was due. Okay. <laughs> like that afternoon. Um, so the update is basically that I'm the new, the interim finance director. Uh, Amory Ralt is no longer here. We have a new mayor, uh, Joe Kilduff. Um, so if you could provide the information to the commission, as I understand you just got the request, but if you would provide it so that staff can um, forward it along to us, that would be helpful. Okay. Okay. All right, Kim, do you want to bring us up to date on the um, financial health, is it monitoring or management system? Monitoring. 
Sure. Um, I'm going to give a quick summary, and I think I will let the team give you the 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 real um, the real meat and potatoes because they're the ones who are working on this all the time. Um, we we rolled out the four tiles for the annual financial uh, data reporting, and from that. Um, that occurred on October 26, so just a short time ago. And the good news is, is that 85% uh, of the municip 85 municipalities or 50% have actually um, either completed all the tiles or have actually um, worked on them. There is a uh, deadline for um, De December 15th, which is next Wednesday for municipalities to provide us with that data. So far, we've um, heard good news uh, about the reporting system. Haven't a uh, few people have had a little bit of uh, issues with logging in, but I will um, ask Bill, um, Morgan or Mike to provide any other updates that you'd like to have and uh, they work very closely with the system. Uh, Kim, I think, uh, you know, as with any new system, uh, we've uh, had a couple unanticipated uh, issues, but we've been able to resolve them. And uh, I would say for the most part, everyone's real happy with uh, all aspects of the reporting, especially as it relates to extensions. The process is a lot easier, uh, appointment of auditors and uh, no one likes uh, doing any reporting in <laughs> for UCOA, but I think they, they believe it's a, a, a lot simpler process. So I, uh, that would be, uh, I think, uh, where we stand. But 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 a good thing is, uh, you know, we, we've had a lot of uh, job aids and uh, user manual training videos, and I think that's uh, eased uh, a lot of the uh, reporting and concerns. Good. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, then the last thing we need to do is look at the calendar for next year. There so was one change. There was one change from the original uh, issuance that went out, and I believe it was the month of October. But um, other than that, it's really in line with this year's schedule as we the meetings fell um, because we had to adjust a couple of them during the year. And um, so they're really in line with they with where they were uh, in the past. OK, and we're allowed to continue with um, virtual. Meetings the whole year. We're going un unless we hear differently, um, we will continue to, to do that and unless the governor's um, executive order changes. Because we as municipalities can't do it past April. Oh, OK. All right. So um, does anybody have any issue with the, the calendar? If not, um, a motion to approve it would be in order. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Any abstentions? Then I would say the motion carries. One other item for the other category, other business that we want to bring to your attention is that uh, the city of Norwich has uh, informed us that they plan to issue some pension bond defic uh, de deficit bonds of $145 million. And um, we just received word of that from um, from their council and um, that went to OPM as well as Treasury. And um, we were informed that their voters have already uh, voted upon this, and it is our time to uh, look through their documents and okay. respond. Okay. And for the record, I'm the actuary for Norwich and worked on this project with them. Okay. And I will add to that our firm is Bond Council with Norwich. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, anything else? If not, can we get a motion to adjourn? So moved. Is there a second? Second. 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 Oh. Everybody in favor? Aye. 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 Um, opposed? People who want to keep talking? <laughs> <laughs> happy holidays. Okay, motion carries. Mm -hmm. Happy holidays to everybody. Uh, okay. And happy new year. Happy holidays. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Kate. Thank you.